momentary and patient suffering of shame, reproach, and torment unto death. Isn't this what the apostles wrote about a lot? Isn't this what Jesus Christ wrote about? He was despised of all men. He had no place to even lay his head. These types of things. Everybody forsook him at the very end. The scriptures never speak of the staros or the cross as an image or a sign, but always as a reality of the Christian burden. Remember, all those verses about persecution we, we mentioned earlier? And a cognizable to the senses, in every case known by the sorrows and the anguish of the sufferer. Oh, this isn't fun to preach on. Oh, no, now you're really not tickling ears. Well, I'm sorry. It's true. Jesus said, He that taketh not his cross and followeth me is not worthy of me. But again, that's the Christian burden. It's not some real wooden cross you drag around with you. Like some people literally do. The staros are the cross of personal shame and suffering for the truth and the righteousness of God. The preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Oh, we're talking about the wood. No, we're talking about what Jesus Christ did upon the cross. How he paid your sin debt through his death, burial, and resurrection. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The wages of sin is what he paid on the cross for you. For you're saved by grace, the grace of God, through faith, faith in Jesus Christ, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, like the Catholics think you work your way to heaven, not of works, lest any man should boast. Why? Because God's not going to share his glory with nobody. He saves you on his terms, his way. Period. You don't get to, you don't get to share in the glory for that. Most people just can't accept that. They've got to think that, well, I'm good enough to get into heaven. No, you're not. The wages of sin is death. He paid that sin debt. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's how you get saved. It's a free gift. You either freely receive it, you freely reject it. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ paid the price. He paid, paid the sin debt. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The very thought of foolishness is sin. That's all it takes, one foolish thought. You're a sinner. You're born into sin. Okay? So, this is, when we, when we talk about this, it's very, very important to de define what the cross is actually representative of in the Bible. They see no sense, there's, there's those that see no sense in suffering wrong and in, in in injury patiently, lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. That's, that's most Christians. They don't want to suffer. They want to sit in Smiley Joe Osteen's church or Benny Hinn's and get their ears tickled. They're going to be the first ones lining up to probably receive the mark of the beast. They're going to think we're, we're, in, the, we're in the millennial kingdom or something. Or they're going to fall into grand delusion when the, when the rapture doesn't happen and take everybody out of here. And give everybody a jail, get out of jail free card pass. They're going to fall away. Why? Because they put them, their, their faith in some false doctrine. Not the, not the word of God. Some man. I'm warning you. I'm just warning you. It's what's coming. The Bible said it's going to happen. Strong delusion that they will believe a lie. That they might all be damned or receive not the love of the truth. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 4, 1, Now the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, speaketh expressly that in the latter times, which is where we're living now, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, and having their conscience seared with a hot iron. That's where we're at. Evil men and seducers shall wax, that word wax means to grow, they shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. 2 Timothy 3, 13. So, if we go further, it says, Lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ, and reproach for believing and suffering in the crucified Savior. Far be it that I should glory save in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
By whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. See, you're crucified with Christ, according to Galatians 2.20. That's what we should be. Crucified. Meaning, living a crucified life. We're not dead, yet Christ liveth within us. We are dead, yet Christ liveth within us. Okay? This is what we're talking about here. But not, this is not, not, not in reference to the actual wood of the cross. But the self-sacrifice and the offering of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ on the wood of the accursed tree. He was made a curse for us, that we should not bear the curse. You, do you see the distinction now? In every sense, the scripture of the cross, first, is a pale or a wooden stake. Okay, This is what, from a, from a um, the standpoint where it says Jesus was crucified on a cross. Okay, yeah. But, when we talk about these other verses where you know we, we bear the reproach of the cross and, and glory in the cross, this is symbolic of the shame and the reproach and the patient suffering of innocence before the world for righteousness' sake. Joseph bore this form of the cross while imprisoned by the captain of Pharaoh's guard till the Lord delivered him. And so Ignatius, being condemned in the Antioch to be torn and devoured by the wild beasts for the faith of Christ. Does that sound right? bore his cross from Antioch to Rome, where in the amphitheater he suffered it, despising the agony and the shame. What about all the martyrs? What about Jesus? I mean, you know, we're to follow Jesus Christ. He was the first example. In every scriptural sense, the cross of Christ is a living reality. And never that lying vanity, which is a senseless image in the sign of the wood. And I will end there. We got through the whole thing. Praise the Lord. I'll go ahead and close this out in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this time that you've given us, Lord God in heaven. I just pray, Lord God, that your truth would go forth. I pray, Lord God, that I would get out of your way and that the Holy Spirit would speak not only through myself, Lord God, but any God-called Christian in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, that your fear would be upon us and that that fear would drive us to repentance, that it would drive the unsaved to repentance, Lord God. I do pray, God, that you would save their souls. For it's your will that not one would perish but that all would come to repentance. And that every devil or demon or fallen angel that would try to hinder your word from going forth would be bound and rebuked, and if it be thy will, cast into the abyss. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that you forgive us for any and all sins we've committed in any way, shape, or form, that the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart would be pleasing in your sight, O Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask all these things. Amen. Amen.